this is Jade from Inspirlang. Welcome back to my video channel. I'm sure at this point, if you haven't seen Everything Everywhere all at once, you might have heard of it. It cleans up with seven awards during Oscar this year and it sets a huge milestone in Asian American film history. I first saw Everything Everywhere at the theater right outside of Universal Studio in Orlando when it first came out. So the movie itself is always going to be very special to me because of the trip. But other than that, the originality of the movie is what shakes me the most. There's literally everything for everyone in this movie, whether you like action, culture, comedy, drama, or even languages. And today, I'm going to do a language analysis of this movie. The movie was filmed in three different languages, with the main dialogue in English, of course, along with Mandarin and Cantonese. We have Evelyn, Joy, Wayman, and Gong Gong in the picture. Now, can you guess when they use Cantonese and when they use Mandarin? Let's take a look at our first example today that has all three languages in one scene. Here you can see that grandpa, specifically maternal grandpa, Gong Gong, can only speak Cantonese. That's the language Evelyn uses to talk to him. And it's a key point to the story because Joy only speaks a very, very beginner version of Mandarin, not even Cantonese, right? And her vocabulary is very limited also. And that's why when she wanted to ask Gong Gong how his flight was, she asked him how his airplane was instead. And keep in mind that Joy doesn't know how to speak Cantonese and didn't have a word of Cantonese throughout the entire movie. And a pivotal point from the scene is when Joy tries to introduce Becky as her girlfriend to Gong Gong. This is what Joy said. Gong Gong, this is, this is Becky. Becky. Becky is my... Shit, how do you say it? Uh, she is my... Joy didn't have the Mandarin vocabulary for the word girlfriend, which is 女朋友 or 女朋友 in Cantonese. And as the multilingual speaker, Evelyn took advantage of it and stepped in and used Cantonese to tell her that, that Becky is a 好朋友 or 老友. Both terms means good friends. Uh, uh, 好朋友, uh, 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 mm. uh, uh, wow. Although Joy could not speak Cantonese, but as a heritage speaker, she knows what her mom just said and did to her, and no wonder she was frustrated. The cold switching is also very interesting because Evelyn is the one that speaks all of the languages, including Cantonese, Mandarin, and English. And she's also the only alpha character that the audience never actually meets. So moving on, Gogo is actually my favorite character throughout the movie, but this part still has me cringed a little bit. <laughs> so the accurate pronunciation of Gong Gong's line in Cantonese is <laughs> But just like many Cantonese speakers, Gong Gong could have influence from another Chinese dialect, which is very common. And Gong Gong remained to speak only Cantonese in the movie, at least in the current universe. When an actor switches languages in this movie, it is very strategic and powerful because once Gong Gong starts speaking English later on, you immediately know that is Alpha Gong Gong instead of the breakfast demanding Gong Gong from the current universe. Papa? <laughs> I'm not your father. At least not the one you know. I'm Alpha Gong Gong. <laughs> And finally to Wayman, Wayman speaks only Mandarin and some English, while Alpha Wayman speaks English only. 
His personalities are so different that it is usually not difficult to identify which version he is, even though he usually has the same outfit. If I have to think one more thing today, my head will explode. You may be in grave danger. There's no time to explain. Now a little backstory of the main characters I mentioned earlier. To many people's surprise, Michelle Yeoh is not really a native Chinese speaker. Her native tongues are Malay and English. She learned to speak Cantonese fluently in the 1980s when she was building her acting career in Hong Kong and learned Mandarin in the 2000s when she was filming for Crouching Tiger and Hidden Dragon. And I will link a blog that we wrote recently about her in the description. On the other hand, Ki Hu Kwan can speak Vietnamese, Mandarin, English, and Cantonese fluently. He could have spoken Cantonese during the film, but obviously he didn't because the show needs the characters to speak Mandarin. Interestingly enough, his wife also served as the onset translator for this movie. James Hong was born in the US but got sent back to Hong Kong in his earlier years. Interesting thing is that his paternal grandfather was from Taishan, like myself. So you see, his Cantonese could have been influenced by another dialect as well. I love this movie and I think it deserves all the awards that it did receive. However, this film did get some criticism, or a lot, especially in mainland China because of the complicated storyline and the fact that these actors don't speak like native Chinese speakers and that's not how people in China would speak. Well, this isn't a story about native Chinese speakers living in China, and we're talking about immigrants and heritage speakers. And so I myself am really amazed that they were able to implement all these different languages because it adds so many challenges. And I'm glad that they did because it just makes the film and story so much richer and more authentic. And because I know one of the number one challenges for heritage Chinese speakers is language barriers. It's really interesting seeing how these languages intersect with each other. As a Chinese language teacher myself, I have definitely been to a lot of awkward dinner tables with my friends because all their families speak different languages and I have no idea how they communicate and understand each other. And I hope you enjoyed today's media language analysis of everything everywhere all at once. If you still haven't seen the movie yet, I would definitely recommend that you go see it and see if you can figure out which Chinese dialects they are speaking. And I definitely have a lot of fun whispering to my boyfriend every time during the movie when the characters switch language. And I feel like I just understand the characters so much more. So a little fun fact for the Chinese title or translated titles for the movie are also very interesting. Um, the official Chinese name that shows up during credits at the end of the movie is Tima Hong Hong, which means bold and imaginative, and constrained style, and sometimes can also be used to describe someone whose ideas aren't so practical, but very imaginative. It's uh, officially used in Malaysia and Singapore. As far as mainland China, it's actually translated to Shun Xi Quan Yu Zhou which means Evanescent Multiverse. I actually really like this name. And in Taiwan, it's translated to Ma de Duo Chong Yu Zhou, which means Mom's multi Multiverse. Or it can also be translated as Damn It Multiverse because Ma de can mean Mom's or Damn It. And in Hong Kong, its translated name is Ke Yi Nui Hao Wan Gao Yu Zhou. So that is for us today. I hope you enjoyed this little language analysis and little tidbits of everything everywhere. So um, if you like our video, make sure you subscribe and like it and make sure you get our update, our video updates in the future. And if you would like to study Chinese from us, visit inspolang.com slash zoo and learn more. I will see you next time. Bye bye. Thanks again for watching! Don't forget to click like and subscribe if you like my video. If you would like more Chinese learning contents from me, please visit inspirlang.com for more. I hope to see you again in my next video. Bye bye!